ഓം ശ്രീ സായിറാം ഹാർട്ടി വെൽക്കം ടു വൺ ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ഫർ ദ നയൻത് ക്ലാസ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് സിലബസ് സയൻസ് ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ബുക്ക് വൺ ആൻഡ് ദ ചാപ്റ്റർ ഇസ് മാറ്റർ അറൗണ്ട് എസ് പ്യൂർ Today's class, the end part of this chapter, that is part 3, which mainly deals with separating the components of a mixture. Before we move on to the last part of this chapter, let us recap the previous class main points and also clarify our home assignment. questions answers in our previous class we came to know that the mixture which is a combination of two or more substances in any proportion is of two types homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture the homogeneous mixture have uniform composition throughout whereas the heterogeneous mixture do not have the uniform composition throughout further we continued with the saturated solution and unsaturated solution where we came to know a solution in which no more solute is able to dissolve in that given solvent then it is a saturated solution the solubility of the saturated solution is the amount of solute that is present in a saturated solution at a given temperature and also we worked out few simple mathematical problems relating to this solubility mass of concentration and also we continued with the true solution the suspension and the colloids with simple experiments we came to know the definitions their properties and also examples i hope it's clear for all of us now let us check out the assignment to answers for the questions that were given very happy to see all of you eagerly waiting to check out your answers and get it cleared the first question classify each of the following as a homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture let us know what this homogeneous mixture is a homogeneous mixture a mixture of two or more substances that two a mixture of two or more pure substances which form a single phase soda water vinegar filtered tea and air are homogeneous mixtures a heterogeneous mixture a mixture of two or more pure substances forming many phases the examples are wood and soil are the heterogeneous mixtures a comparative study of true solution colloid and suspension I have to write the comparative study the property suspension colloidal solution and a true solution appearance suspension it is opaque colloid it is transparent and solution is also transparent in its appearance tindall effect it shows the tindall effect the colloidal solution also shows the tindall effect 
but the solution does not show. Diffusion of particles do not diffuse, the particles will not diffuse, they diffuse slowly but they diffuse rapidly in the solution. The Brownian movement, it may show Brownian movement, it shows the Brownian movement, it may or may not show the Brownian movement in the solution. The nature of that mixtures, heterogeneous is the suspension mixture, heterogeneous is the colloidal solution and the homogeneous in nature is the true solution. I hope it is a direct question for our comparative study. I hope all of you have written the second question also clearly. Third question, give reasons for the following. Brass is a homogeneous mixture. Dear students, brass is a homogeneous mixture is the question and the answer for that brass is an alloy of two metals forming a single phase with the metals retaining their properties. Hence, it is homogeneous mixture. Even though two metals are combined together in the brass, but it exists in single phase and the two metals will also have their individual properties even though they are together. Hence, it is a homogeneous mixture. Dear students, even the same question for give reason can be in another way also. Brass is an alloy. Why it is an alloy? Since it is a combination of two metals together. So, it is an alloy. That is the other question. But the question is, brass is a homogeneous mixture. The answer is, brass is an alloy of two metals forming a single phase with the metals retaining their properties. Hence, it is a homogeneous mixture. Second one, potash alum is used to separate the suspended particles in water. The answer or the reason for that, potash alum settles down the floating impurities in water. So, it is used to separate the suspended particles in the water. The chemical name of potash alum, the formula if I want to tell K2SO4, Al2SO4 thrice 24H2O. It is potassium sulphate and aluminum sulphate which are having more water molecules that is 24H2O. Third one, when light is passed through colloids, the path of light is seen. The reason is, since the light is scattered by colloid particles, the colloid particles are charged and they scatter the light when the light falls in the colloidal solution. Because of that, the path of light is seen. To make a saturated solution, 36 grams of sodium chloride is dissolved in 100 grams of water at 293 Kelvin. Find its concentration at this temperature. Dear students, a very simple mathematics. To make saturated solution, 36 grams of sodium chloride. So, the data given. So, what is the data? Here, 
So, what is the data given now? Solute. So, the solute is sodium chloride. What is the formula? NaCl. How many grams? It is 36 grams. Solvent. Water. What is the formula? H2O. How many grams? 100 grams. Then we know solution is equal to solute plus solvent which is equal to solute is 36 plus solvent is 100 together 136 grams. They have asked the question is find its concentration. So, the concentration, the percentage of concentration or concentration, the concentration percentage is equal to mass of solute divided by mass of solution. into 100. So, the concentration formula. Now, mass of solute it is 36 divided by solution 136 into 100. So, it is a simple mathematical calculations if we move on to this then you will be getting here 2 1s are 2 8s are 16. 2 6 are 12, 2 8 are 16, 2 9 are 18, 2 3 are 6, 2 4 are 8. 900 divided by 34. Simple calculation, dear students. If you make 34 divided by 900, go on 34 tables, you should know. 34 into 2. 2 4s are 8, 2 3s are 6, 34 into 3, 3 4s are 12, 2 carrying 1, 3 3s are 9 plus 1, 10. So, it is greater. So, 34 2s are, which it becomes 68, 8 minus 6, 2. So, that 0 is here. Now, 34 into 4, if you multiply. 4 4s are 16, 4 3s are 12, 12 plus 1, 13, 34 into 5, 5 4s are 20, carrying 2, 5 3s are 15, 16, 17, you make further, 34 into 6, 6 4s are 12, 6 3s are 18 plus 1, 19. 34 into 7, 7 4s are 28, what is the value, 6 4s are 24, 4 carrying 2, 6 3s are 18, 18 plus 3 plus 18 plus 2, 20, 2 not 4. 7 3s are 21, 21 plus 2, 23. So, it is more. So, 6 4s are 24, 4 carrying 2, 6 3s are 18 plus 2, 20. So, you are going to get 10 minus 4, 6 and 1 as it is 0. So, 16 put a point, take 1, 0. You know here 34. 5s are 170, 34 4s are, 34 4s are 136, 5 minus 3 it is 2, since point is there you take 0 to 40, 34 7s are 238 it becomes, enough if we get that much approximately, so 34 divided, 900 divided by 34, you are going to get 
four seven percent. So this is the concentration of sodium chloride solution when thirty six grams of sodium chloride dissolved in hundred grams of water. So what is the concentration? The concentration. of sodium chloride solution is equal to 26.47% i hope it is clear for all the students the part 3 of today's topic separating the components of a mixture because in the mixture the wanted and the unwanted materials are there so to separate them various methods are being adopted and we are discussing about the last part of this chapter which is separating the components of a mixture the constituents in homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures are separated by various methods the constituents of heterogeneous mixture are separated by simple physical methods so which are the simple physical methods hand picking sieving filtration threshing winnowing evaporation distillation magnetic separation and also the separating funnel that is being used these are few methods that are used to separate the mixtures especially the heterogeneous mixtures a unique method hand picking mainly in the cereals the paddy the jowar the ragi the maize the wheat and all these soap stones unwanted materials which are been picked up by the hand itself so hand picking method sieving a beautiful method we see in the house the flour to prepare the chapati the wheat flour which is having husk in it so it is been separated by using sieve tubes so sieving method different sized holes of different sieve instruments to separate the different materials that are there so it's a sewing process winnowing with the help of wind the unwanted husk is also been separated from ragi paddy just now we got the harvest at that time you might have observed this method of separating the unwanted things from the grains or the cereals that is being grown we knowing threshing it's one of the method of separating magnetic separation simple way is you use a magnet to separate the magnetic substances from the unwanted materials and this is one of the instrument that is used in metallurgy of iron to separate the ores of iron from the unwanted materials a magnetic separation filtration it's also one of the method of separating evaporation dear students what this evaporation is it's the process of a substance in a liquid state changing to a gaseous state a liquid changes to gaseous state mainly due to 
इंक्रीज इन टेम्परेचर और प्रेजर और इट मे बी बोथ टेम्परेचर एंड प्रेजर सो द चेंज ऑफ लिक्विड स्टेट टू गैशियस स्टेट ड्यू टू इंक्रीज इन टेम्परेचर और प्रेजर और बोथ ऑफ दैम इट इज कॉल्ड एज एवॉपरेशन इट इज अ फंडामेंटल पार्ट ऑफ द वॉटर साइकिल and is constantly occurring throughout nature the water cycle evaporation is one of the stage separation of volatile component from its non volatile solute that is example is given to obtain dye from blue or black ink you just observe the picture that is been viewable for all of you arrange the apparatus as shown in the picture start to heat the beaker which is containing water and that is been covered by a watch glass which is having ink a blue or black ink with the help of the bunsen burner you start to boil heat it by placing it on a tripod stand with a wire gauge and you can observe as the vapor the water gets vaporized the vapors that are going to settle at the bottom of the watch glass that hotness is been absorbed by the ink and it is going to separate the dye from that ink which the ink may be blue or black so this is one of the method mainly the evaporation that is used to obtain the dye from blue or black ink the next is the centrifugation what is this centrifugation the centrifugation is the process of separation of components in a mixture it's a process of separation of components in a mixture having different densities through spinning through spinning process different densities through spinning process we separate the components mainly the principle behind it the denser particles force it to the bottom and the lighter particles stay at the top when spun rapidly so the denser moves to the bottom and the lighter floats or stays at the top where are this centrifugation method applied the applications of the centrifugation to separate the skim milk from whole milk in the dairies the water from clothes mainly in the washing machine blood cells from your blood plasma the diagnostic lab we use this centrifugation method if you observe an animated view of a person a mechanical centrifuge machine where he is rotating with his muscular strength the holder and the rotation which is having while rotating the two test tubes which are being filled with the pa with the liquids as we know the denser particles settle at the bottom and the lighter particles stay at the top separating funnel a very simple method mainly to separate the immiscible liquids in layers depending on their densities so you observe the diagram 
a very important diagram from the exam point of view for 2 to 3 marks. Simple way of drawing a separating funnel. So, a separating funnel. A simple way you can use scale for drawing more neatly than the diagram which I have drawn it here. It is a stick drawing, a rough diagram dear students. Most of you all are more good in drawing where you can draw more better. So to separate immiscible liquids in layers depending on their densities. We knew that mainly The applications to separate the mixture of oil and water, oil will not dissolve in water, oil which starts to float on the water. When you put that in this separating funnel, the oil will be retained here and the water will be removed from the bottom where you can observe here a separating funnel. Kerosene oil is there at the top of the water and the water is at the bottom. As you open the stopcock, the water flows down and only the kerosene is left over. Removing the lighter slag, the impurities during the extraction of iron from its ore in metallurgy process to get iron from its ore. Ore is a mineral from which a metal is being extracted. So, to remove the lighter impurities that are there in the ore during the extraction of iron, we use this separating funnel. Sublimation, a unique process in daily routine we observe. The process in which a solid converts into gas directly without converting into liquid. Without converting to liquid, a solid converts to gas, it is called as sublimation process. Examples are the camphor, the naphthalene, ammonium chloride and anthracene. If you just observe the setup that is being Viewed by all of you, can see a china dish. Inside that we have taken ammonium chloride and salt together. And we have closed it by inverting a glass funnel. And the glass funnel opened end is being covered by cotton plug. We have placed it on a tripod stand with a wire gauge and started to heat it with the help of Bunsen burner. What happens is a unique process where the ammonium chloride starts converting to gas without converting to liquid. The solid ammonium chloride converts to gas. Hence it is a sublimation process. Chromatography, chroma in the Greek word, the meaning is color. So, what this chromatography is? A technique that is used to separate or the separation of the solutes that are dissolved in the same solvent. Many solutes dissolved in a single solvent and to separate them, the unique technique is the chromatography. The chromatography technique involves what? The partition of components that is the separation of components of a mixture to be separated between two phases which move with respect 
to each other, which move with respect to each other. The two phases are the fixed phase, it may be solid or the liquid and a mobile phase that is a moving phase that will be the liquid. So, in the chromatography we see two phases, one is the fixed phase and the other is the moving phase to tell you all. Many solutes dissolved in a single solvent. To separate that, the technique that is being used is chromatography. You just observe the applications of this chromatography. Dear students, you can observe here, there is a single solvent, many solutes are there which we can view here with the help of the technique by using the chromatography paper, we, we are knowing it, so many colors are being separated. So, applications of the chromatography to separate the colors in a dye, the pigments from natural colors, drugs from blood, for all these processes we use the chromatography technique. Distillation, a unique process which all of you have viewed. If you observe the animated picture here and the setup that is been there, what this distillation is? It is the method used to separate the substances in mixtures with significantly different boiling points. To separate the components in the mixture which are having different boiling points. Example, acetone and water, acetone, ethyl alcohol. So, you can observe here a round flask which is being fixed to an iron stand and inside that you have taken the mixture of acetone and water and you have closed it with the help of a rubber cork and a delivery tube and a cool condenser is attached and then to the delivery tube at the other end you have placed a conical flask where you can see the acetone and water are having different boiling points. So, on boiling the acetone and the water mixture that is taken in this round flask, you can see based on their boiling points we can observe the extraction of the substances in the conical flask on the other side. Dear students, the next is the fractional distillation. The fractional distillation and distillation varies here in a very minute way. What it is? The fractional distillation, it is the method to separate mixtures containing the chemicals with boiling points close to each other. In the distillation with different boiling points, but in fractional distillation, boiling points are there, but they are very close to each other. Fraction. So, it is used the term fractional distillation with different boiling points which are close to each other. Such components, such substances are being separated by using the method called fractional distillation and the fractional distillation apparatus set up what you are observing in the diagram. Where it is used? Before that it has three stages, evaporation, condensation and collection. On heating, evaporation, then condensation, then collection. The three stages in fractional distillation process. Petroleum products, gases from air or the substances which 
adopt the fractional distillation method for themselves to get separated. Crystallization. The crystallization is another method or it is a process that separates a solid with solid, a pure solid in the form of its crystals from a solution. So, getting crystals from a solution and the crystals are in pure solid form. That process is called crystallization. Once again I repeat it, crystallization is a process that separates a pure solid in the form of its crystals. A pure solid is separated in the form of its crystals. From where? From a solution. We call that process as crystallization. Salt from sea water, crystals of alum from impure samples are the examples which adopt the crystallization method. The ways of obtaining the crystals, the first is precipitation from its solution, the second is freezing. Water purification system in water works. If you observe the diagram from the exam point of view, also very important. Simple way of getting the portable drinking water. Portable water, drinking water, we call it as. So, how we are going to get the portable water? For that, a system water purification system in water works. A reservoir tank which is having the water is being connected to the sedimentation tank, then to the loading tank, then to the filtration tank and then it is made to flow into the tank of chlorination and finally, it is being supplied to the houses for drinking purpose. The water from the reservoir tank which is made to flow into the sedimentation tank and the sedimentation tank makes the floating impurities to settle down when we add the potash alum. K2SO4, Al2SO4 thrice and 24H2O. The potassium sulphate, aluminium sulphate with more water molecules that is 24H2O. So, in the sedimentation tank, the solids, impurities which are floating made to settle down. Next, we are loading that sedimented water into the loading tank and the loading tank which further makes the water to flow into filtration tank which is having the layers fine sand layer, gravel layer, coarse gravel layer and also the charcoal to tell you. There the water gets filtered. And even then there are few minute harmful microbes or bacteria. So, to remove that we make the filtered water to be flown into the chlorination tank. By passing the chlorine gas to kill the bacteria and now the water is ready for drinking. We call that chlorinated water and that water is being supplied to the homes through various pipelines. So, a simple method of purification of water. Dear students, reservoir tank, sedimentation tank, loading tank, filtration tank, 
chlorination tank finally pipeline to supply to the houses that is all. In more simple way if you want to remember sedimentation, aeration, filtration, chlorination. Sedimentation settles down the floating impurities. Aeration foul smell or dirty smell will go by making the tank to be opened may allowing the air and sunlight to enter the tank which is containing the water that is aeration tank. Next is filtration tank the three layers the charcoal the gravel and the fine sand layer filtration and the next is the chlorination tank to kill the bacteria the chlorine gas is being passed and we get the drinking water that is the portable water chlorine water and that water is supplied to the various houses through the pipelines that is being connected. So dear students hope you can remember these stages of water purification which is there in the picture that is shown. If not, at least remember these four tanks. First is reservoir tank, sedimentation tank, aeration tank, filtration tank and another one also chlorination tank, five tanks. So, water all will be collected in reservoir tank, sedimentation tank, impurities that are floating will get settled. Aeration tank, the foul smell or the dirty smell of the water is removed by keeping the tank open to sunlight and air. Filtration tank having the three layers of charcoal, gravel and fine sand layer filters the water. And finally, the chlorination tank which is going to kill the bacteria which are harmful. And finally, we get the portable water and it is being supplied through various pipelines to the houses for drinking purpose. Because water is the gift of God, water the elixir of life, water the sustainer of life. So it is most important commodity for the life to sustain and retire. That is why in Hindi a saying goes, Jal hai to khal hai re bacho to tell you all. So, hope all of you have understood this water purification system in the water works. Assignment 3. Dear students, today's class of separating the various substances with few methods to the ninth standard level we have understood. To retain that here you have the assignment 3. The questions, first question which separation technique will you apply for the separation of the following butter from curd. Iron pins from sand, acetone from water, pigments from an extract of flower petal, fine mud particles suspended in water, camphor from salt. So, you have to name the method that is used to separate these substances that are being mixed. Second question. Write the steps you would use for making tea. Most of you all know how to prepare a very good tea. Use the words, the solution, solvent, solute, dissolve, soluble, insoluble, filtrate and residue. You have to use these scientific terms when you want to prepare a tea. So, while preparing the tea, what all the ingredients? or the components you use, you have to relate those components to these scientific terms. I hope it is clear the question for you all. Hope that the question is clear for all of you. Dear students, 
today's topic of the chapter is matter around as pure mindly dealt with separating of substances by various methods with this the chapter is been completed we offer everything of our understanding at the lotus feet of the almighty and having hope and faith that all of you will recap in your respective places of today's topic which we have discussed and will complete the homework or the assignment 3 with honesty and with interest with commitment especially by saying so praying for the world's peace and happiness thanking you one and all jai sai ram